Hi everyone, welcome back to Swedish Plant Guys. We get a lot of questions every week, which is so much fun. We read all of them, and when we have gotten a question a couple of times, we bundle them together and we make Q&A videos like this. Now we will not be answering you in writing because it takes way too long to try and give you the help you need. So we make Q&A videos like this one instead. Now if you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, please do. Hit that bell as well so you get a notification every time we put up something new. Please give this video a thumbs up and share with your friends. Question number one, and this is concerning our Dracaena Masangiana, the corn plant video. Now we'll put a link to that in the description below next to this question. I have a mass cane and I accidentally damaged the roots during repotting. I loosened the soil around the pot and pulled and most of the roots ripped off. What should I do? This is extremely common when it comes to Dracaenas because the Dracaena doesn't have a very extensive root system. So it's quite easy to, for you to rip some of the roots when you're trying to repot it. Usually it's not a problem. If there are some roots left, they will regrow. What you should do is just to let the soil dry out in between waterings. Do not let the soil be too wet and they will continue to grow and you will get a new root system. However, if you hurt it quite extensively, if you don't have almost no roots left, then what you can do uh, is that you need to cut down some of the foliage because what you basically done when you, when you cut off the roots and you do just have a little, little bit of roots left, uh, you have taken away the plant's um, way to get water up to the leaves. So if you have a lot of foliage, but only little root system. You will not get all of that water through your system. So what you can do if you really hurt that root system is to cut down the foliage. Cut down the stems so you get less foliage. Because then you help the plant. It doesn't need all of that water to go out to that foliage. So make a cut. Now we have a video called cutting from a Dracaena. We'll put a link to that as well in this description below. Go and check that out on how to make that cut. And also you can take that cut and make a cutting out of it so you get a new plant from it. Question number two. Now this is concerning our all you need to know about the windmill palm. And we'll put a link in the description below next to this question so you can go and watch that video. I want to put my baby windmill palm into the soil in my backyard, which faces to the west. A lot of strong sunlight in the summertime. Do you think it can survive? I am in Vancouver, Canada, and so the winter temperature is below zero for a month during nighttime. Do you think it can survive? Good question. Now, the windmill palm actually can withstand quite cold temperatures. Uh, now, the, the, the growers actually recommend down to about minus 10 degrees Celsius. So if you're talking Celsius here and you say that it just goes beneath zero degrees Celsius, then yes, it would work fine. However, if you, I'm not sure how exactly the weather in Vancouver is because we are in Sweden right now, but it sounds like you have a similar weather to what we have here in the southern parts of Sweden, which means that it goes below zero uh, during one or two months nighttime in the wintertime. And that could work for the windmill palm. However, there are a couple of things you have to consider. First of all, even if the temperature is just, just below zero degrees, it can be even more than that if you have strong winds. So if you put it somewhere where you get, it gets hit by strong winds all the time, it won't have, it won't experience zero degrees Celsius, it will actually experience 
maybe minus 10 or minus 15 degrees because that wind will lower that temperature. So make sure that you have that in consideration when you try this, where you plant it and how the wind will affect it. And another thing, if you try it, if you take it from the inside and are going to plant it outside, you need to make sure that you let it get used to that direct sunlight. If you just put it outside and plant it, it will get burnt. So what you do is that you put it outside, in, in, continue to have it in a pot, put it outside for maybe one or two hours a day, put it inside again, then put it outside, and you keep on doing that for almost, let's say, two weeks. So that it will eventually get used to that direct sunlight. Because then it will not get burnt. Then you can plant it in the soil and try and keep it outside. If you're still not quite sure if it's going to survive, what you could do is that you could wrap it. When you've planted it outside, you could wrap it in wintertime with something. You could wrap it with some form of a cloth. Uh, you could also wrap it in uh, this, uh, the, that plastic uh, bubble uh, plastic that you can uh, plop <laughs> like that. You could also wrap it in, in that, but make sure that you still have air inside of that uh, and you still get some light as well. But by doing that, and especially down by the soil, you could also add something in wintertime. You could add a lot of uh, fallen leaves uh, or also add some cotton or cloths or something so that the root system will get a little bit warmer than the surrounding areas. Now try all of those things and please, if you try this, make sure to leave a new comment if you've succeeded. Question number three, and this is concerning our all you need to know about the Philodendron scandens video or the Philodendron uh, heteraceum. And we'll put a link to that video in the description below next to this question. My Philodendron micans have been putting out a lot of leaves, but they're very, very small. It sits by a window where it gets really bright, indirect light all day. What could be the problem? But this can happen with different types of philodendrons. All of a sudden, they produce smaller leaves than they have done before. Uh, now, there are usually two problems with this, now, or three problems, but you've eliminated one of them because you say there here that your plant is actually put in a very light spot. Because my first recommendation would be to move your plant to a brighter um, location. But if it gets indirect light all day and it gets really, really much light, that is not the problem. So we'll eliminate that one. Now there are two left. Uh, one of the things is quite easy to do something about. It could be that your mycon is not getting enough nutrients. So start adding fertilizer when you water. Uh, that could be one of the problems. And so I would try that first. The other problem is actually on the other scale of that. Because if you have added fertilizer to your mycon uh, and it has been planted in the same pot for a long time, you could also have a problem with too much salt in your system. Uh, and you can usually see that, that on the upper portion of your soil, you can see that you have small salt particles that are starting to appear. It looks like salt and that is actually excess salts that have been created from when you water and when you fertilize. If your system gets too much of these salts, what can happen is that the, the plant is still alive and still well, however it starts to produce small, smaller leaves. So if you can, what I would recommend you to do is to try and 
lift up your plant from your pot, if you can do that without hurting the roots, and check the soil. If you can see if there are any salts in the soil. If that's the problem, then you can either repot that plant, or if you just have a little problem, you can take it outside and you can rinse through your system. Just rinse water, keep water on the top, let it go through your system and let it go out from the soil. And just do that over and over again and the salts will go with that water and you will get rid of the salts. But if you have a lot of salts, you could replant the pot in a new container or just remove all that soil and give it some new soil. So it's either one of these three things, but I think since you, since you have a lot of light, it's one of the other two. Question number four, and this is concerning our all you need to know about the fiddle leaf fig video. And uh, we have a link to that in the description below next to this question if you want to go and check that out. I have a ficus dorata. I have moved her to a southwest placement at the and the top leaves started drooping. Do I move her back to the old location where she was doing well, or do I just keep her in the new location until she adjusts? Good question here, because the fiddle leaf fig is, can be quite sensitive when you move it. Uh, however, if it reacts this hard so that the top leaves starts to droop, I think that something has happened here. And what probably happened is that when you moved it, you could have moved something in the, in the stem so that some of the roots could have been detached. It could have broken off in your system. That means that since there is a lot of water moving through the system in a fiddle leaf fig, it has big leaves, a lot of water to cover all that area, if you have broken off some of the roots, it can't move as much water as it wants in that system. And the new leaves will start to droop like that. If that's the case, then it's not actually a problem with the placement. It's a problem with you hurting the roots. Um, but if you know that you were really, really careful and you didn't break any, anything, and you just moved it softly, so to speak, then yes, I would re-put it in the position you had it earlier. Because if you had it somewhere where you know that it was feeling well, you had no problems with it, that placement is probably better than the new placement. Question number five, and this is concerning our all you need to know about the CC plant video. Now we'll put a link to that in the description below next to this question. Please help me, my CC plant has a lot of cavities. A few weeks ago I put it on the window and I added more water, hoping it will help. Do you have any suggestions to what I can do? This is also a good question because we say in that video that if you the, the, the CC plant doesn't want a lot of water. It needs to dry out completely in between watering. And if you give it too much water, you will get yellow leaves uh, or even brown leaves that just withers away. But if you give it too little water, if you don't give it enough water, you will actually start to see small cavities in the plant. And I will show you here. It's in this portion here of the stalks, where you can see that it's a little bit thicker, then it becomes a little bit smaller and then the leaves arrive. Let's see if we can see it even clearly here. You can see that this portion up to here is a little bit thicker than the portion above. Now these here, here you have a lot of the stored water and nutrients. You have stored water and nutrients in the tubers as well but also in this part of the stem. So when you don't water your plant enough, uh, it will start to take that storage. It will start to use that water in that storage. And eventually, these here will get cavities along here, from the top to the bottom. Cavities in, it looks like it's 
sinking in. I like the stem is sinking into the stem. Now those cavities, when you have gotten those cavities, they will probably never go away. So you cannot try and give more water to get those cavities to go away. That will not work. They will always be there now, sadly. However, you should start to water a little bit more than you've done before so that the plant will start to feel well again. And when it sends out new stems or new stalks, those will, sorry, those will not have uh, those cavities. They will be without cavities. But if you continue to water it too little, even the new stems will get those cavities eventually. Question number six, and this is concerning our all you need to know about the Philodendron scandens or Heteraceum video. Now we have a link to that video in the description below next to this question. So if you haven't watched that, please do that. I just replaced my new, replanted my new plant in a pot, but it doesn't have drainage holes. Should I replant it immediately? The leaves have started to curl and I don't know what to do. Very good question. Now in that video we say that the Philodendron scandens, it likes to, it, it doesn't want to be too wet. If it gets too wet in the soil, it will hurt the roots and you will get problems. Now one way to get that is to plant, a, plant it in a pot without drainage holes because then you don't know how much water you have in the container. Now, your first question was, should I replant it immediately? Now, I would say no. You don't have to replant, you don't have to have a philodendron in a pot with drainage holes. However, you go on by saying the leaves have started to curl. And one indication that you have too much water and that the roots are starting to damage is that the leaves can start to curl a little bit. It can also be a problem that you haven't given it enough water, then the leaves can also start to curl a bit. So it's on the both ends of this scale. Uh, however, since you've gotten this problem, then yes, I would repot it, repot it in a pot with drainage holes so that you know and you can make sure that you don't have too much water in your system that damages the roots. Question number seven, and this is concerning our, our all you need to know about the Monstera Deliciosa or the Swiss cheese plant. Now we'll put a link in the description below next to this question so you can go and watch that video if you want to. I have a question. My plant is a year old and it's starting to produce air roots, but still no split leaves. What do I need to do? First of all, you have to slow down a little bit. You have a plant that is only one year old. It's growing, it's feeling good. You say here that it doesn't have any brown leaves. It, 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 everything looks to be good. It's starting to produce air roots as well, which, which is also an indication that your plant is feeling well. However, the Monstera only get the fenestrations or the split leaves after a longer period of time. When the plant has grown out a bit, when the stalks are beginning to become quite long, then the fenestrations come. So all you need to do is just keep on doing what you're doing. Keep the plant healthy and you will get the fenestrations. But you have to have patience. It will take some time before they come, but they will come, I promise you. Question number eight, and this is concerning our cutting from a Philodendron scandens or Heteraceum video. Now we'll leave a link to that video in the description below next to this question. So if you want to check that out, you can. Now, should the water be filtered or left out overnight? And this, in that video, we take a cutting and then we put that into water. Uh, now here in Sweden, we, we use our tap water for everything. We can drink it and we can use it to water our plants. and. We can use it just to keep, put the cuttings in that water, but I know that that's not the case in all of the world. So if you live somewhere where you know that you have problems with the tap water, then use bottled water instead so that you know that it's clean water. 
Uh, now, for some, in some places in the world, you have too much chlorine in the water. And what you can do then is that you could leave it overnight or aerate that water so that that chlorine will actually go out from the water and then use it. But check with your local authorities to make sure that your tap water is fine before you use it for watering or for cuttings. Question number nine. If you buy a palm that was greenhouse grown, can you toughen it up by keeping it outside during the warmer seasons? Can the plant be trained to endure cooler, cooler weather over time? This is a good question. Now, every plant has a, has a system that works in between certain temperatures. Now, you can't change that. Uh, so, it has the, the amount of heat it can withstand and it has the amount of cold it can withstand. You can't change that because that is set inside of the whole system of that plant. However, you will have a lot of different palms. So by choosing different type of palms, you can get palms that can withstand the heat or the cold that you want. For instance, the windmill palm is one of the toughest palms in enduring cold, cold uh, temperatures. Uh, but also, if you have a palm that was grown inside of a greenhouse, and it has gotten the right amount of light, the, right, the exact right amount of heat, and so on, it can be a little bit sensitive because of that. Then yes, you can toughen that palm up by introducing it, slowly introducing it to colder weather and a, a rougher climate. But you can never go past what that type of palm can withstand. Question number 10, and this is concerning our cutting from a Philodendron scandens or Hederaceum video. Now we will leave a link in the description below next to this question if you want to go and watch that. I just started propagating a golden pothos in a kind of strange way. I cut two vines, each five, six smaller leaves long, and just laid the whole vines into the soil. Leaves standing up, but the roots, root nodes are all covered in soil. Looks fine so far. Any thoughts on it? Do you think it has a good chance to grow? Perfect. Yeah, you've done exactly what we wanted. In that video we say, please leave a comment if you've tried to propagate uh, in any type and any form and let us know how it works as well. Now this is a different type of trying to propagate a vine, a vine plant, like the philodendron or the pothos. Um, and yes, it could actually work because the, it, this is the natural way that it propagates in nature. A vine will try and climb on uh, something, anything like a tree or something to get, the, get, on, uh, to get up to where the light is. But some of the vines are going to grow on the ground. And this is exactly what happens. When it grows on the ground, it sends down roots from the nodes so that it propagates. And from everywhere, every node where it sends down roots, that is basically a new plant. However, what you need to consider here is that you need to put the pothos vines just on top of the soil. You shouldn't put the nodes uh, underneath the soil. You should put it on top of the soil, but in contact with the soil. It can work if you put the nodes under soil. However, what can happen also is that you will, the, the leaf will die because the, uh, some of the leaf will also be under the soil and the node can't handle that if the leaf dies. But by just leaving it on top of the soil, keeping that soil moist all the time, you will trigger the nodes to send down roots and then you will get new plants from that. But just 
Let us know how this works for you. This is one way of trying to propagate a plant. So let us know if you have success and good luck. Okay, that was all of the questions for this Q&A. If you have more questions for us, don't hesitate to leave them in the comments. We read all of them and then we try and make new Q&A videos like this. So more videos are coming. <clears throat> if you haven't subscribed yet, please do and hit that bell as well so you get a notification every time we put up something new. We always like when you hit that thumbs up in our videos and please share with your friends as well. Now until next time, hi dog.